Well, hello, welcome back to another video. Um, today we're going to be carrying on with the waterfall scene that I've been working with uh, Ben Cloward on. And so if you didn't catch this before Christmas, um, Ben and I have been doing a quick collaboration. He's been building up a uh, forest stream scene, um, looking at level building techniques and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and he approached me to build some waterfalls and splashes. Um, which I did and so now we're going to be doing some videos breaking down exactly what I did and how I did it so definitely go and check out Ben's series and then come back and check out here for the um, for the sort of making of so this was the scene uh, that Ben sent me and the first thing I wanted to do uh, was get some reference so whenever you're doing any kind of um, work in 3d art you need to have some good reference so Ben had this uh, this mood board um, which is great, lots of cool things happening here with forest streams and you can see lots of water. Um, some of these are long exposures and as you can see here this soft fade. Um, so you want to be a little bit careful of, of long exposures because um, that doesn't really what water looks like. Uh, and one problem with all of this is it's not moving, it's all very static. Um, and so I put together this, um, which is just little video clips um, just to give you an idea of what water looks like when it's moving. Obviously, we're doing um, the effects here. We're going to be doing animation. Um, we need to be able to see what that looks like. So uh, these are actually video clips that I've taken myself. Um, obviously, you can find video online, YouTube, places like that. Um, but actually, I've been around quite a lot taking videos. Whenever I see anything interesting that might apply to some of the effects at some point, I'll take a quick sort of 10 second video, really focus on it. Um, and this is actually available uh, on Gumroad. So if you head over to my website, and it's a reference video collection, um, and there is a lot of videos now, um, all little 10 seconds, um, covering all sorts of different topics from fire to smoke, um, some light show stuff down here in a minute, yeah, some snow, all sorts. Uh, and that's available on Gumroad or ArtStation just for five bucks. Um, and so you can grab that if you wish. Cool, so now I had some reference, um, some nice still reference, for the environment kind of pieces as well uh, and then some video reference for for movement um, I wanted to start making some meshes um, now one of the things Unreal can do uh, is you can export geometry from your level and so if I select these things you want to be careful make sure you don't select all the foliage um, there's an awful lot of polygons in here and Maya will really struggle um, it'll just about manage to open it um, but it'll be pretty unusable so don't do that like I first did. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to grab these water planes. So um, there's a nice feature in Unreal. If you select a mesh, if you press Shift and E, um, which is the same here as right click, select, select matching all classes. Uh, it's just going to select everything that's using this static mesh. So in this case, this scene, everything, there is only these water planes using this shaped plane mesh. Um, and then you can just grab them and export them. You can, might want to grab the, the terrain as well. The terrain's actually a lot bigger than it needs to be for this scene. Um, maybe you could clean that up a little bit before you export it. But again, that's quite high res um, in polygons. Oh, not from this far away, it's not, but if I zoom in, it'll export that at a really high res level of, uh, of resolution. Um, obviously, Maya doesn't have the dynamic tessellation in, um, but we don't really need the terrain uh, in there. We just really need the water planes. So. Uh, if I get back over here, just select these water planes, Shift E to select them all, and then File, Export Selected, and it'll just export that as an FBX to wherever you want to do. Cool. Once you've got that ex exported, bring that into your um, package of choice. Uh, just clean this up a little. There we are. Uh, and you can see that here, and you bring in all of your different things. Now, we're only using this as a reference, um, but it's really useful when we're doing. Um, all sorts of VFX work. So any kind of waterfalls, you're going to want to have um, either the water levels like we have here or the rocks underneath to, to do kind of like splashes and get an idea for that kind of shape and form of the geometry in the level. Um, cool. So now that I have these water planes, um, I focused, I go back to Unreal and have a look which one it is. So I sort of focused up at this top area of the stream. I didn't want to do the entire thing. Um, it's going to take a long time. Uh, I didn't really have quite that much time to dedicate to it. Um, but also, you want to have your assets be reusable as possible. If I make a custom waterfall mesh for every single one of these, it's quite a lot of data. Um, so you want to kind of make this in such a way that it is reusable uh, and 
editable. So, so I think I picked one of these ones up here as one of my main uh, references. So this is the third and fourth, I believe. Let's have a look. One, two, yeah, third and fourth. Yeah, one, two, three. So now I can go back over to Maya. Yeah, that's the third. No, it isn't, that's the third. Third and fourth. So I'm just gonna create a quick mesh that goes between these two. Now I know it's gonna have a nice curve to it. The water's gonna be flowing off here and kind of falling under gravity. So actually I'm just gonna start with a cylinder. And if I just snap that over here, what are we gonna do? If I rotate it 90 degrees, that's fine, 90. Uh, here we go. Uh, I'm just going to eyeball it so it matches the front of the water plane here. It doesn't need to be exact. Obviously, we can adjust these things uh, in scene. And things like water, they're very natural, so they're quite forgiving. Um, I'll just snap that in there. I snap that pivot to the top, snap it down. And here we are. You can see we can kind of create that um, that curvature that we want. Uh, and then later on, we'll be able to scale this down, um, up or down, depending. So we need a bit more geometry than that. If I push this up to 60, and I'm just gonna delete all the faces I don't need. So any of these end faces, any of these end faces, this one, this one, all of that, and all of that. And there we are, I've got a nice arc. And this, because the pivot's up here, I can scale it out forwards. If I want to have more fast moving water, it's going to come off with more energy. And you're going to get more of that kind of, um, more of that shape, that slower moving energy. Uh, and also it will deal with different height. Um, so as long as your pivot's in one of the two places, either at the top or the bottom, um, you'll be able to sort of scale up and down uh, appropriately. Um, now this is fine, but actually what I want to have is a um, little bit of lead in. Um, and then I'll just bring that out. It's fine. So there's a little bit of um, kind of geometry where the waterfall is going to blend in with the water plane, and the same at the other end. We'll just bring that out and sort of square it off. Now remember, there's going to be terrain hiding these edges. So if they aren't matching up perfectly, it's probably fine. And we can always use multiple of these meshes if we need to. Now, if I just do this, um, we're going to want to use some world position offsets. So we're going to need some geometry. So I'm going to use vertex painting um, to sort of control where foam is uh, and also some world position effects to move the vertices. So we actually need some geometry. So this amount of geometry on a curvature is probably okay, but I need a lot more curvature this way. So I'm just going to add some edge loops um, and I just do it by splitting and then going down. We're not adding so much geometry. Um, something like that's fine. You can maybe grid it up completely so that it's sort of squares. It doesn't want to be too high res. It doesn't want to be too low res either. Something like that as a first pass is probably fine. Uh, and then the same along these pieces here as well. So just going in and manually cutting that up. Like so. Something like that probably works. Um, polygon count. Um, about 600 vertices, it's not too many. Um, it's enough, it's enough for now. Um, check our UVs. For some reason Maya doesn't like if you already have them selected when you open the UV editor anymore. There we are. Um, this is all gonna be one, want to be one continuous piece. So all the water materials is gonna flow along here, down there and down here. So um, as we currently have it, that's not gonna work, um, but we can just do a quick automatic unwrap and it's actually just gonna pick that up. Uh, and then I would probably normalize this to the square. Uh, and you see it may be ever so slightly off. Well, we can always fix that. Just go in, snap those UVs to the edge. Same with those ones, scale them down to nothing so that they're completely flat, snap them to the edge. And now if I select all of the other UVs, all of these central ones, I can do an unfold, unfold along U. And it's just going to line those up, up for me. Ooh. Last thing I want to do, this is a hard edge plane. Um, we could use a texture to kind of mask out these edges. Um, that would work perfectly, no problem with that. It's just a little bit wasteful. 
Um, don't really need to use a texture for that. We can do it with vertex colors. So I'm just going to take this uh, and paint the vertex colors on it so that I can kind of create a mask, put a mask out my edges. So I just know no matter what I'm doing with any of my textures or anything, I'm always going to be masking out those, those edges. So vertex colors is in MEF display here in Maya. I'm going to apply color. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to replace everything and make the whole thing, all channels, and make the whole thing white. Now my whole mesh is white, and all I want to do is select these edges. So I double click the edge loop. You can't apply vertex color to an edge, so we have to convert. So control, uh, right click is the convert menu in Maya. I can convert to vertices, and I can just replace that color with black. Now you might notice these corners. So actually the way vertex interpolation, vertex color interpolation works is along the triangulation of the, of the mesh. So if I just select these two faces and triangulate them, you can see the edges following along this way. Um, well, if I select that edge, I can do a flip spin, spin forwards, and now we've got a nice thing there. Um, it's not a huge issue. I usually fix it up because it looks better. Um, and there we are. Um, we are going to use other vertex colors later. Um, but rather than setting them up now, I just export this and um, bring that in and we can start working on our um, on our scene. Uh, our, this is a sort of placeholder mesh and then we'll come back and forth when we need to sort of set the other vertex colors up. Cool. So having a look at the other meshes in the scene, um, we have a arc, exact same process, exact same thing rather than having it with the top and bottom pieces. So here's the base mesh I've actually exported. And you can see the other vertex colors there, but we'll come back to those later. Um, it's a bit lower res mesh, but that's obviously fine. Um, so we want a small arc. Let's turn the grid off so it's a bit better. So, so what I'm trying to build up here is a sort of toolkit or a modular set. So we want one large sort of piece, uh, one large base piece. That's our kind of undercoat. That's going to be our, um, our filler to make sure that everything has some, some waterfall. And then we can use these smaller pieces to add details. So a small arc, um, and then just flat planes. Again, placed with the pivot here so that they're easy to sort of place and adjust. So this will work for kind of um, foam streaming off, that kind of thing. Uh, a couple of bent planes. If I just open these three together, you can see we've got one turning to the left. Oh, I haven't had the animation baked to it. One turning to the right. Um, very simple to make. Again, you can see the triangulation in these corners to get the vertex colors correct. Uh, and then all I'm using is a bend deformer. Bend deform, nonlinear bend. Going to come in in the wrong place. We snap that there. Bring that down. We can change the curvature. Oh, it's the wrong axis. That's fine. Rotate that 90 degrees. And you can see we're curving here and then it stops. Well, if we just change the lower bounds oh, and the upper bounds, now we're getting a full curvature. Um, and you can very easily make nice bent planes um, to curve your water around the rocks, depending on how sort of windy your uh, your um, your river is going to be. So materials are very easy easy to move linearly, so it's very easy to scroll things along. Um, but if you want things to turn round, it's much easier to have a mesh that bends round than a straight scrolling material. So that's how we did that. Um, last thing we did in terms of materials or in terms of meshes, sorry, um, was these crosses. So uh, if I open this one up, now everything we've made or sort of seen so far has been flat. Um, water is pretty flat, but obviously you get that kind of bubbling up and um, areas where the water is kind of like going to push up and things. So we wanted to have something with a little bit of three dimensionality to it. Um, and so I made something like this which is just multiple planes um, kind of pushing through uh, and sort of almost like a star shape. Now, this is a little bit um, luxurious, I suppose. Uh, you might find that there's uh, performance issues with this. Um, we're adding quite a few layers of transparency. And so it might be this is too expensive for, for your scene, potentially. But here I'm trying to push visual quality. Um, and so I wanted to try and and use something like this uh, and it's actually very simple to make so if i open up the arc 
we want to have um, this curve. We want to create a, a vertical plane at the end uh, and then follow along. Well, if I select this edge, one thing we can do here in Maya, if we convert, you can do polygon edges to curve. If we select that, it's just going to give us that curve as a curve. Now, if I select this, I'm just going to move it out of the way up here a little bit. If I create a plane, smash it here, pick it up a little bit. So we already have that arc, the flat one, and we've already made that. We just have that from here. But if I go through and rotate this 90 degrees, I can select the edge on this, make that a one by one plane. So if I select the curve first, Okay, select the curve and then shift select the edge. Uh, move the curve. Shift select the edge. And then extrude. It will use the curve to do it. Um, now it looks like my curve is the wrong way. Well, that's not a problem. If I select my curve in the modeling toolkit, uh, curves, you have a rebuild, reverse direction. There we are. And so now my curve starts here and ends here. Oh, something's gone wrong. It's because my curve's not straight. Should be. Well, if I go back into my extrude, I can put some more divisions in this. So currently it's only got one division. It's not going to really work for us. Uh, if I do divisions, say 10, and there we are, you're getting that curvature. Um, and that will now match up perfectly with the uh, with the arc that we had before, at least it will do if you've done it correctly, which I probably haven't here. But you can see, hopefully, using that technique, uh, you can create this crossed um, effect following the arc round. Um, and then maybe we can get away with just a cross plane if I take these and delete them. Um, that will give you the effect of um, some three dimensional um, shape. But we might also want to have these diagonals as well. Uh, and then the other thing I did is just take the same thing uh, and delete the bottom parts. So again, thinking about performance, the crossed planes all the way crossed um, gives you nice amount of three dimensionality, but these planes under here, they're not really doing anything because you can't see them through the, uh, through the water that's gonna be there on top. Um, so just thinking about performance, just went through and deleted those. Uh, and then again, same process with the vertex colors. And the triangulation in the corner. Cool. So with all those exported, went over to uh, Unreal and started building my material. Uh, and that will be the next video. So it feels like enough for today. Um, really nice uh, way of working, taking some geometry out of Unreal into Maya, using it as kind of like guidelines uh, and building up your, your sort of like effects meshes that you need based on those. Um, making sure you get the right sizes and shapes and everything. Cool. Hopefully that has been helpful and informative. Um, join me next time when we'll go over the waterfall material. Um, big thanks as always to my patrons for supporting the channel uh, and I will see you all next time.